India just became the fourth nation to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon. India is the first country in the world to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole, a moment of history for the country. At the top of LBM, the M4 rocket carried India's prestigious Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft, tracking its journey as India made history in 2023. Chandrayaan-3 landed on the moon's south pole, making India the fourth nation to do so. However, what they uncovered has even Michio Koku, the renowned physicist who championed space exploration, sounding deeply concerned. Koku describes our universe as a three-dimensional bubble expanding within a larger nirvana, an endless expanse of eleven-dimensional hyperspace, beyond human comprehension. When sending a robot to the moon, the expectation is that the stable lunar environment, free from erosion or rust, would allow for advanced exploration. The moon, in theory, could serve as a foundation for factories, building thousands of carbon copies of itself. Yet, what was discovered beneath the surface suggests something far beyond the expected, unknown materials, strange heat signatures, and possible structures that defy conventional understanding. India's Chandrayaan, 3 was launched by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, on July 14, 2023, from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. It achieved a soft landing on the lunar south pole on August 23, marking the first time any nation had explored that region up close. This mission followed Chandrayaan-2, which faced a landing setback in 2019. However, ISRO's persistence paid off, solidifying India's role in global space exploration. Why the South Pole? It's a scientific treasure trove. The permanently shadowed craters hold vast reserves of frozen water ice, leftovers from the solar system's early days, potentially dating back 4.5 billion years. This water could transform lunar bases by providing oxygen, fuel, and hydration for future missions. It's why NASA's Artemis program, alongside efforts from China, Europe, and Russia, has its eyes on this region for permanent outposts by the end of the decade. Chandrayaan 3's success adds India to that race, showing that the moon's potential isn't just an American or Chinese endeavor, it's a global frontier. The mission consists of three parts a propulsion module, the Vikram lander, and the Prajan rover. The propulsion module, orbiting the Moon, carried the spectropolar imagery of habitable planet Earth, shape, payload to study Earth's light and gather data on atmospheric signatures. However, Vikram and Prajan did the heavy lifting on the surface. Vikram, standing 2 meters tall and weighing 1,700 kilograms, housed Prajan, a 26 kilograms rover designed to roam and analyze the Moon's terrain. Packed with advanced tools, laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, LIBS, Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, APXS, Ground Penetrating Radar, GPR, Chandra's Surface Thermophysical Experiment, CHASE, and the Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity, ILSA, the mission was designed to study the Moon's surface composition, temperature, subsurface structure, and seismic activity. It operated for one lunar day about 14 Earth days, from August 23 to early September 2023, sending back critical data before shutting down due to the freezing lunar night. Reactivation attempts were unsuccessful, but in those 10 days of operation, Chandrayaan-3 delivered groundbreaking insights, evidence of water ice, lunar minerals, and something far stranger. ISRO's budget for Chandrayaan-3 was around $75 million, a fraction of NASA's Artemis costs, showcasing India's cost-effective space technology. For global viewers, this efficiency highlights a rising player in the moon race, challenging U.S. dominance while offering collaboration potential. The mission's data feeds into international research, including NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which continues mapping the South Pole. Prajan's onboard instruments, LIBS and APXS, began analyzing the regolith, the fine, dusty layer covering the moon. Early results confirmed elements consistent with previous lunar missions, including sulfur, aluminum, calcium, iron, chromium, titanium, manganese, silicon, 
and oxygen. However, something unexpected emerged, traces of a material unlike anything catalogued on Earth, the Moon, or anywhere in our solar system. This substance absorbed electromagnetic radiation in ways no known material could, behaving almost like a sponge for energy, with properties that defied explanation. Michio Koku, a key voice in theoretical physics and a US-based advocate for space exploration, described this finding as both groundbreaking and deeply unsettling. If the material formed naturally, it challenges basic physics. Its energy-absorbing properties don't align with any known mineral or compound, such as silicates, oxides, or even exotic lunar glasses. If it's artificial, the question becomes, who or what left it there? Prajan's Libs used lasers to vaporize soil samples into plasma, analyzing their light signatures, while APXS fired alpha particles and X-rays to map elements. Both flagged this anomaly, detected at multiple sites near Shiv Shakti Point, 69.37 degrees south, 32.32 degrees east. No database matched it, not Earth's crust, lunar samples, meteorites, or asteroids. Koku's concern stems from the implications, if natural, it rewrites chemistry and physics, if artificial, it hints at extraterrestrial or unknown origins, possibly linked to the moon's mysterious past. NASA has studied lunar soil since the 1960s, collecting 382 kilograms during Apollo missions. Yet, Chandrayaan 3's measurements at 70 degrees south latitude, combined with ISRO's data, suggest a material with potential applications in energy storage, stealth technology, and propulsion. However, its misuse or misunderstanding could backfire. Koku urges caution, and the scientific community, including researchers from the US and Europe, is scrambling to replicate tests. Online chatter speculates wildly, from alien technology to lost human relics, but ISRO's data remains raw and inconclusive, leaving room for both or an unease. Chandrayaan 3's Chandra surface thermophysical experiment, CHASED, also detected unusual heat signatures. Typical lunar surface temperatures vary 50 degrees Celsius on top, 70 degrees Celsius at a 20 mm depth, and minus 10 degrees Celsius at 80 mm. However, Chase found heat pulses emanating from beneath the surface, fluctuating in a pattern that seemed almost dynamic. Given the moon's geological inactivity for billions of years, what could be causing this? Initial theories suggest remnants of the lunar magma ocean, where heat might be trapped in isolated pockets beneath the insulating regolith. However, such heat should remain stable, not pulsing. Could this anomaly be connected to the mysterious material found? Is it absorbing and releasing energy, or is there something structural deeper down? The biggest shock came from Prajan's ground-penetrating radar, GPR. It detected a massive cavern beneath Shiv Shakti Point, large enough to house a small city, with structured features suggesting high conductivity. The grid layout hinted at intentional design, walls, frameworks, or supports, rather than a natural formation. ISRO remains cautious, but speculation is rampant. Could this be an extraterrestrial base? A remnant of an ancient civilization? If active, could those heat pulses be part of a system, communication, defense, or monitoring? Further missions must proceed carefully. Chandrayaan, 4, NASA's Artemis, China's Chang'e program and other international efforts are all targeting the moon's south pole for exploration. This newfound knowledge could revolutionize space technology or introduce unforeseen risks. The moon's history is being rewritten, and its mysteries are only beginning to unravel. As the world watches, one thing is clear, the moon is not just a barren rock, it holds secrets that could reshape our understanding of the universe. The stakes are high, not just for science but for humanity's future in space. What comes next? More missions, more discoveries, and perhaps, the answer to whether we are truly alone in the cosmos.